podcast. Um, yeah, we're rolling. Uh, cool. Hey, everybody, before we get started, I just want to say that this episode is brought to you by patrons like Akira uh, Comics, Qua, Jim Vasquez, Kylie Denton, Nestor Flores, Sotosan, 0424, and Video Gamer 75 If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it really help us out. Thanks for your support, everybody. Thank you. That's right, everybody. Welcome to the sellout episode. This is the episode where we sell out. It's official. We have YouTube monetization. After many, many months, many false starts, lots of just waiting, lots of waiting. Thanks, YouTube. Hire some more people. <laughs> Hire some more humans. Can't let robots do all the work. Uh, we're here. We're monetized. It's great. Behold. Ad. Yep. Uh, and so far, according to the audience, they're not terrible. That's good, because everything's on default right now. Um, yeah. I just went through last night as I was working on the new episode of Let's Tech FGO and just went into the backlog and turned monetization and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, so our whole backlog and also it remembered all the stuff from the way, way back when, back when <laughs> we had monetization, but we didn't have any fucking views, so it didn't matter. Those are all re-monetized successfully. Thanks to YouTube for remembering all those settings. Nice. Uh, but yeah, and kind so, of barring the couple of videos we've had out there that have had copyright problems... Uh, we're generally all up, and uh, I'm I'm surprised. Uh, not a lot of things got hit with the limited monetization. Oh, which is good. We're we're advertiser right. friendly. Sponsors, you can start rolling in anytime now. Uh, yeah. Actually so actually, it's funny. Um, you might, well, you might find this funny considering our our subject matter. The most frequently dinged with the limited monetization uh, are either the actual plays. Okay. Or occasionally a What's Up episode when it sounds like we talk about some real stuff. But that's because we're very unfiltered here on What's Up, which is the show. Mm hmm <laughs> The only Let's Talk FGOs I think that got hit were ones that were pretty obvious. Like, I even posted this in, in the Discord that you were streaming at the time, so you probably didn't see it. I was like, hmm, hunting for KP in Heaven's Hole isn't advertiser friendly, you say. <laughs> no really i think our most recent valentine's which was called revenge of the sexy nerds was also not considered suitable for most advertising I'm like no fair fair i'll keep not that in that. mind for future but hey <laughs> it was actually i find it a funny how it discovered um we had monetization because uh yesterday we got done um recording let's talk fgo and I was like, all right, it's time to fucking stream. You know, I got my flex on, opened up some shovel knife, was set in my stream settings. And I noticed there at, like, one of the settings, it said enable monetization. And it said, and it was toggable. So I was all like, okay. I hit it. And I was like, did that, did that, did that actually do anything? I don't know. So I went, you know, I started my stream up as usual. And in the preview, because I use a dual monitor system so I can, like, you know, check my stream health and all that crazy stuff and see how bad latency it is. And an ad just started playing before the stream, and I was all like, <gasps> Yeah, at which so point. then you then you ran to me and were like, hey, I can turn on monetization. I'm like, hmm, this is news to me. Hold on, let me look at some things. <laughs> and uh, in the thing that we have now tweeted, uh, there was a little alert at the top that said, hey, your channel's been approved for monetization. I'm like, yes. Uh, no yes. email or anything, thanks, YouTube, but uh, oh. a little alert on my channel. So I probably would have caught it when I went to upload Let's Talk FGO later, but... It was just, it was a, it was Struck. funny. It just happened. Yeah. It just happened. No fanfare. Just, ta-da! Which I think is okay. Yeah, it's just a technical so, thing, but it's there. And I spent a lot of time going through the backlog. Cool. Ugh. God, we have a big backlog. How many yeah, do we hey, have feel, feel free for everybody to just, uh, I don't know if we can, we can necessarily encourage you to, to do anything, and we can't do anything ourselves, but hey, nothing's stopping you from, uh, pulling up a playlist of, uh, Let's Look FGO or something. And then setting it to start and autoplay and going to work. <laughs> Nothing stops you from doing that. <laughs> it's fine. That I mean, honestly, that is a, a way people can support us now. If you don't feel like giving um, money on Patreon, you can just watch and not turn on your ad blocker. That would be cool. And, uh, yeah, I'm not hopefully... entirely sure how like the ad revenue system works. Yeah, personally. we'll have to see how it shakes out because it depends on the advertiser and all the other stuff and like... I don't remember the exact algorithm. It's been a while since I calculated all this because it's been a while since we've had a, had monetization. So uh, we'll figure it out over time. Yeah. And obviously, hey, it's YouTube. They don't get this number back to me. Like I don't, I don't know what the projected earnings for the episode of say Let's Talk FGO, which is brand new that we just dropped, is. But yeah, because they have it. There, there's no calculation at all. I'm sure it is generating some form of revenue. I don't know what that is yet because it takes YouTube a while to calculate this. 
And unfortunately, Google AdSense will only pay us out in hundred dollar chunks minimum. Though I did just I did go back and find out that oh hey, my fucking AdSense account has twenty bucks in it. I can't get them, but they're there. Ta da! So yeah, um, and also another thing that's important is that um, uh, if you have YouTube uh, Premium, aka YouTube Red, uh, we still get, we get a little slice of that. We basically get paid a little tiny percentage for your views, also, and that applies even if we have limited monetization. So. Cool. Well, we get, all all you need to do if you have YouTube Premium is just watch our videos. So, well, now that we've actually hit YouTube monetization, that definitely tells me it's like it's time to, uh, quote unquote, up our game. Yeah, hopefully I, that. Well, we'll we'll have to see how how good and clean it is. But hopefully, yes, this should supplement supplement the work to actually like give us more. Where we can turn into more stuff on channel. Um, we'll have to see yeah. what responses are to stuff. Uh, obviously, I will say this. I, you know, we, the, I'm joking. You know, it's the sellout episode. You know, it's still better to do fan funding, um, because as we've discussed, yeah, hey, there's some things that YouTube's not keen to monetize. So, if you want us to keep being us and like not have to worry about that sort of shenanigans or chicanery, uh, supporting us directly is great. Otherwise, hey, just keep doing what you do. Watch. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Ah, let's see. Uh, also, I so... did. I did make sure to turn on the super chat feature uh, for YouTube streams, so people can. I believe they can just go ahead and tip us to get their uh, donations and comments read. Uh, I'm gonna leave mostly the handling of that up to Lucky, because he's the one who streams a lot right now. I'm putting in the hours. I'm putting in a lot of hours. Yeah, so. Yeah, like, I'm almost done with Shovel Knight, a game I only, like, started, like, I just got. It's a little bit shorter than I was expecting it to be. I think I only have, like, one more campaign to do, and that's gonna be my fourth episode. Which, again, I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna play after that, so, you know, I'll probably do what I did last time, and put up a vote. Uh, some people in my stream are actually asking if I was gonna, if I would play some lewd visual novel games. I'm all like, do you people really want this from me? And also, we're like, can we do that? Now that, now that we're monetized, probably not. That would probably be a bad idea. Well, I can always just turn off the monetization. Yeah, it's true. You could do an unmonetized stream, but I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Get- that's, that's definitely not money worthy. I don't, yeah. whether or not it's able to be on YouTube at all. I, well, I've seen some shit, so like, yeah. YouTube's a little more flexible than you think, but not when it comes to ads, so yeah, that would be that would have to be a no monetized stream. Please don't hurt us, YouTube. Yeah, you know, like age restriction, no monetization, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. But it, like, it's one of those things. Like, I only have a very like I have like a small, but um, I don't want to say dedicated, but they show up fairly often. The people who watch me stream, I usually don't get like any higher than you know, like ten to twelve. Except when I get a p- couple people who are just speaking in some romantic language the entire fucking time. That was weird. I didn't know what to say about that, so I didn't. Like, yeah, like, literally, last um, stream, like, three people were just, like, speaking in some foreign language just the entire fucking time. I'm just like, what is going on here? Are they having, like, a secret meeting here? That'd be a way to fucking do it. Just well, some random... All, uh, unfortunately, all our, all our uh, streams are archived, which includes chat archives, so... Oh, yeah. I don't know, but still, it's just one of those things of, like, it's so weird. I don't get it. But, so, it's like, if I definitely got to start getting, like, a bigger streaming audience, and I got, like, more demand for such things, I can definitely see it happening, but, like, I said, like, we just took our, like, our real first step to becoming, you know, like, solely independent on this, on this con. Right. We are, we are now theoretically hybrid funded, like most YouTube channels. We have a monetization angle. We've had merch, but we need to work on that. And now we have, like, we need to figure out how to push that and like if people are genuinely interested i don't like from watching other creators people usually seem really interested in merch so i was kind of surprised how not far that got but i think it's more of a matter of our designs yeah some of it is that like it we're definitely not necessarily like super effective but i mean some simple stuff logos that kind of thing but uh yeah let me double check. Excuse I don't me, think. Cute, sexy robots. Is that? Oh, that is. I retweet that. And unfortunately, since the last time I checked, Teespring is like completely revamped oh. their website. So I'm like, oh, can I? How are we doing? I did How's actually our, find our out that um, 
I did actually find out that uh, you can actually have multiple amounts of accounts on your Twitter and switch between them. But now I have to do what I do on YouTube, and every time I like do something, I'm like, wait, was that on my account or the studio account? Because um, yeah, I've done that before. Gotta make sure I don't um, tweet uh, not safe for work Paula on the on the brand account. That'd be bad, yo. Yes, correct. No matter how good the art is. No, no being thir- no. This is the true main. Don't be don't be thirsty on. Yeah, we're public. That's our that's our public uh, facing point of contact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, but 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 talk about on brand. Yeah, we mentioned this a little bit uh, yesterday on Let's Talk FGO. But goddamn, um, we got we're gonna have to start setting aside a budget to go to AX. Yeah, like. Maybe not do a panel, or who knows, maybe do a panel if we get um, get good and get big, but... We'll have to God wait damn. until we hit the level where you own a video camera first, I think. Yeah. Or something, because we... I would I would want to make... First of all, just from personal experience, I would want to make sure such a thing was recorded, if at all possible, by me, so I could redistribute it later. For all the people who couldn't be there, because that's always so... Like, that hurts me a lot when you go out and, like... Sometimes you understand contractual stuff, like... Okay, you're playing a theater venue. Well, uh, theater venues are assholes, and they charge you, like, shitloads amounts of money for their theater to appear on film. Okay, I understand this. Um, mm-hmm. Or, like, we've talked about this before with anime guests, like, you know, uh, voice actresses and stuff and are usually, like, multimedia ent- uh, entities and have agencies and, like, need to control their image. So, no, you can't just film willy-nilly. But if it's just you and me and me hiding under the table... That's a really old <laughs> joke that I've made before. I don't know how many people are going to get that. I, that's what I said. Um, that's There's no reason why we couldn't record that and redistribute it So, for people who couldn't show up. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, but even then, we could still do what people normally do and just, like, meetups. Hey, if you're following us on social media and you're at AX, you know, come to blah, blah, blah at time this and that, and we'll be there. But, yeah, like... Just seeing, like, all the stuff that's going down at AX, I'm just all like, I want to be there. There's so many booths. There's so many things. There's things and stuff and places and work. And people. And people. <laughs> it's like, ah! One day. One day. We've taken a step. Mm-hmm. We're working on it. And we're heck, working on now it. That we're, now that we're semi-legitimized, maybe we will, you know, you joke about sponsors. I'm, there are lots of sponsorships I see out there that I'd be open to. I don't know if our audience is large enough to appeal to sponsors. But we're still pretty engaged, so you never know. We never uh, know. And, uh, you know, that helps a lot to get people right up there. Like, God, I don't... This, this will be a business conversation I want to have with Voice, but, like, how did, how did he jump from, uh, I guess, scripting, because he doesn't do the art himself, but, like, scripting and somewhat acting in, uh, you know, s- cartoon skits about Girls Frontline to, oh, yeah, Girls Frontline invited him to come down and be, be at their booth at AX. I'm like, dude, what? That's great. Like that how how do you get to that step? Well, let's see. Voice has like so it's probably just because he's that yeah, big. Voice is huge, but and then he pivoted to Girls Frontline, but still, like yeah. it's that's that's a, that's still super cool though that happened. And that's another mm-hmm. thing we're talking about with like people being being there like, "Hey, he's down there. He's doing stuff." Doing we tolerate things. Girls Frontline. <laughs> Girls Frontline would not sponsor us because I think we we have been quite harsh on them in the past. Well, we've been harsh on the, oh, the yeah. underlying game design. I guess we're not really harsh on the English version so much as we're just harsh on the way the game is made sometimes. It's like, why are you so hard? Yeah, Operation Cube is coming back just a couple of days from now. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 kinda happy though that we're finally getting a rerun because um now I'll have a real chance at that gun, because I know what I'm doing now, theoretically. Theoretically. I've been doing nothing but oh, high ass level logistics. I know some people have complained that, oh man, it's so sad, is not going to be doing anything for like a whole nother week. I'm like, no, this is fine. <laughs> I got shit to do. I got TV to watch. I got to farm fucking French stuff. They're doing the, the France event, uh, Iris of Light and Dark, in Azure Lane right now. They're about to start uh, Operation Cube Plus. I'm like, no, it's okay. FGO can take a back seat, and then we'll jump into half AP, and I got some shit to do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, I don't think... Other than that, Cube is happening. There's nothing to talk about with Girls Frontline yet. I don't know. They brought up. They gave me the Tac 50, and I was all like, "Yes, true." I fucking love this gun. Yeah, like the uh, actual Tac 50. It's so amazing. So tactical. We've. Well, I think we both picked that up for the whatever weird current. 
they're running a currency event. I also picked up like the exoskeleton because I'm like, shit, dude, I need more gold equips. Yeah, the Tac Fifty is an actual anti-material and anti-sniper. Mm-hmm. Big. Yeah, big guns. Oh, it big. Ooh. Love those. Um, but so also, no, they have a, well. I suppose there's another thing, which is they previewed at least they've got an upcoming summer gotcha, and the first thing oh, they God. showed of it was um, G41, um, and I'm like, uh, I must I'm immediately dead. show this to Lucky. And because of course I make it's trying to kill me at every turn, and I died. I did. I only I'm I, I want it. I want it so bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, my homo to. It's pretty cool, uh, but I've 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 established that? with everybody that uh, G41 is not my favorite. So for the moment, oh. I sleep. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, actually, I'm like I'm enjoying a lot of the HK guns, but uh, hey, G41 is German designed. engineering. Mm-hmm. But um, but G forty one is just, it's it's the it's the it's the layer on top of the gun that makes me go yes. Actually, I was gonna say if I was like if I have to prefer my fur my preferred it'd be G thirty uh G thirty six. Mado. Yep. Not that G thirty six C is bad either, but she doesn't stand out as well. That's combat. <laughs> yeah, it's small. It's supposed to be small. Well, yeah, literally, literally, it's the it is the compact version. Yeah. It's not. It's it's shorter than the K, which is uh, curse or short. It's the literal compact version. HK makes a lot of a lot of different variants. Yeah, it does. actually, I'm wondering is there a is there an MG36 girl? I think so. Yeah, that's that's literally just the machine gun conversion, which is the same underlying gun, but we put a bigger we put a bigger mag in and a longer barrel and a, a, usually a bipod. They help flexibility. But we're not so here to talk about front- modern infantry tactics. So yeah, girls' front line um, is like I actually like I actually like <laughs> I actually uh, messed up. I almost didn't get enough because I looked at the shop. I was like, all right, there's only really three things I want in this shop. I want the Tac Fifty, I want the tokens, and I want the fucking five star um, exoskeleton. And I almost messed up and didn't get all my damn tokens. Like gold, like I just realized, getting gold exoskeletons is kind of a bitch. I got like gold, like everything else for days, but not yeah, exoskeletons. I think I've got like one or two, like whole high level at everything. I don't even have enough T-dolls to use all of some of the equip classes, you know. Yeah. But like, I w- that's why I was like, I saw the exoskeleton. I'm like, shit, I don't think I have any of those. Mm-hmm. So that was like an immediate purchase for me. But everything else, I was like, fine. Like, like I've kind of cooled down on my furniture game. I'm like, I really don't like because. Because I've realized, like, as long as, like, my room is doing, like, gets my max bonus, I really don't need any extra sets of furniture. No, it's it's mostly just for aesthetics. Like, oh, yeah. it was, I think, a month or more ago at this point, but there was a recent time where I was just in the middle of the night and I was bored, and I just went redecorating crazy and, like, broke down, like, okay, what themes do I have? How many furnitures do I have in these themes? Do I have themes that go together and just completely re- rebuilt, like, all four of my dorm rooms into different-ish looks? Um, I mean, which, yeah, that is cruel and unusual punishment right there, and I'm still gonna get it. I cry. I just I mean, shares what's a, what's gets tweeted. Which is a great start. So, so. anyway, uh, yeah. So like, I just I just went on a redecorating binge, and then I haven't fussed around with it since then because I haven't really gotten any new furniture. Because hey, guess what? We don't roll the gacha unless it's the the rerun one for sixty, which doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. I'm so mad though. Um, one of uh, one of our buddies, Red. Um, he uh, he's a guy who used to do a uh, tabletop uh, with us. Um, he plays. Uh, actually, I found out recently because he bought me fucking Division Two. Um, he plays um, Azure Lane and Girls Front Line, and he got the fucking DSR fucking costume. I'm like, you motherfucker! That was, dirty uh, Red. <laughs> dirty Red. He really yeah. like because uh, Red's in the army and uh, he real good with that gun, yo. So he's all up in there, oh. but uh, I think that's it for girls' front line. Like, yeah, it's it's not a f- thing yet, but it will soon have some stuff. Like, I gotta see what like what extra stuff is for the uh, rerun because if there's not anything like particularly particularly new, well, yeah, because like, here's I'm, the thing: they said that it it will save your Operation Cube progress. So yeah, that means that if you did it all, which I believe you did last time, you did everything. I did. Mm-hmm. Um, there's only, like, a, there is a bonus thing, but I'm not sure what is in it. Yeah, if it doesn't actually give me anything, I'm gonna be like, mm, For me, yeah. though, I'm like, yes, I don't lose any progress, and now I know what I'm doing, so I can try harder. 
Yay, I might progress. spend this time trying because um, I just got a fucking sec. I got a fucking second taunt fairy. I'm all like, like I'm gonna keep you and I'm gonna level you because you're goddamn amazing. Usually I don't keep like multiple copies of things. I like you know I try to make do with like one. But oh my god, the taunt! If I yeah, have the fa- second fairies taunt, are a little bit different because like those are tactical. Like you want to put them in different slots. And hey, you might actually need to use two echelons at once. Yeah, so it's just like yeah, I might I'm gonna keep it. So I might work on that. But I haven't really been putting in a lot of time in the girls' front line. No, same. I just, it's the first thing I do every day. I log in. I get whatever the login bonus is. I get my daily gift. My, uh, my logistics is done. I send everybody back out and I close it. And, uh, in the past couple of days, I've been immediately opening, uh, Azure Lane after. I'm playing Azure Lane right now. Lord Bismarck is level 99 soon. Nice. Soon I my just got enough, uh, bullets to break, uh, Bismarck to max level. Because, uh, hey, guess what? I'm still um, working on Monarch, so my team is still my uh, my Iron Blood team, which needs some refinering. Because uh, I've gotten to the point where I can actually use Bismarck in Tier Pits, plus Graph. Bismarck is flag. That's my, that's my Iron Blood black line right there. And, uh, and, you know, we're whittling on some stuff. And then, uh, of course, my A team of HMS with all BBs and uh, BCs in the back, because I'm, like I said, still working on Monarch. <laughs> I probably should try and do harder maps just for the sake of getting more XP, but eh. I'll see after I clear the normal story and stuff, because I'm working on my things. But um, I was a little worried, but the cubes have been kind. Um, I got Sirkuf right away, which was good. Yeah. Great sub. Big sub. That's with two Gs and two Bs, everybody. Um, And then that patch also had a San Diego, so I was a little, I was a little upset. <laughs> I was like, how how very dare you in the trash <laughs> right away. <laughs> Give me your medals and go home. Um, but then I got Mass, which was great because that was one of the ship designs that I wanted from the start before this game came out in English. I saw Massachusetts design. I was like, this is good. Uh, and just earlier, finished off my batch from last night. Got John Bart. So I yeah, think- my look hasn't been as stellar. I think I've spent like 70 cubes so far. Well, I'm got... at, I'm 60 cubes in, and I just cleared it, so I'm not super much better. Each yeah, each block of 10 pulls has had a good new ship in it, and I yeah, still no. don't have, um, See, like, what's I the got, other purple uh, one, Dunkirk? Yeah. Yeah, still don't have her. Yeah, so, so, and my, like, 70 cubes spent, I was able to get Surkoff and Forben and Dunkirk, but that's it. I haven't pulled any SRs yet, so I'm, and I'm a little, like, ah! At the moment, because I think I only got like 60-something cubes left. Well, luckily, you got plenty of time to earn some cubes back. And boy, howdy. Hey, guess what, guys? If you actually do your fucking missions, you get a shitload of cubes. Oh, yeah, you do. Like, like I was actually kind of surprised, because I was like, for some odd reason, once I started actually spending cubes on, like, you know, rolling previously, my cubes just shot up. I was like, I had, like, no cubes. Where did all these come from? Well, let's see. Uh, every week, if you build ten ships, you get six cubes back. Um, like every day, if you build one ship, you get one cube. Um, and then there's like three or four cubes daily from other stuff, like win so many victories and whatnot. So yeah, just if you play the game, you can make like five or six cubes back a day. Yeah. And you don't necessarily have to spend things. them. Like most of the time you will because, um, okay, oh, so it's oh, four oh, total daily, back. 12 total weekly. So yeah, four. Not to mention, Still pretty you good. have things like. And you also can get things like commissions, where you can get, just get, like, fucking Right, you can five get cubes and commissions. Also, there's, uh, at the moment, it is a event, so you usually get, like, one or two cubes from completing a map, and then sometimes stuff from three-starring. Yep. So, so it's, they add up. You, you get a decent surplus. You will still spend those at a, at a decent clip, because it's, currently, it's an event thing to get, um, to build three ships a day to get your uh, 300-ish coins, which you need to get um, uh, a meal from the special drop. And then there's two in the store. So there, there's a lot of new ships. They're really they're really fortifying this. And I'm once again sad. Dear Ezra Lane, more fleet slots, please, for the love of God. <laughs> there I are too many before, factions. I sure. literally can't fit all these ship girls. Each each I have four like, I have fleets, deci- all of which are unique. So I have decided I'm going to. Um, I've been. Um, I'm very iron blooded, and I'm gonna. You know, I'm just gonna annex uh, Vichia Domain Dominion on top on top of that. So. Because uh, that's how I roll. Because I was, I was looking at the designs, I'm like, oh my god, these designs are actually kind of fucking amazing. Yeah, uh, bo- both both sides are pretty good, but the the Vichia are are 
their weird piratical theme is pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, words. Nah. Yeah, so again, I'm like, I'm going, I'm still going, but, um, unfortunately, um, there is going more going on in the world of Gacha. So, I don't know why, but I got a big, um, Bondori kick recently. I've been actually been playing a lot of it. Uh, for those who may not remember, um, uh, Bondori, also known as, uh, Bang Dream Girls, um, Band Party, is a gacha style rhythm type game, which uses a bunch of Anna songs, um, original, an- an- original songs and covers of Anna songs, which are, you know, anime theme songs. And, you know, you just play a whole bunch of high schoolers, high school girls, you know, all being in a band. And it's, it's simple slice of life goodness with rhythm game mechanics. I'm just like, no, I like this. I'm in this mood. This is like, Hey, Lucky, what you doing at 3 a.m.? I'm laying in bed playing, um, tapping my phone at ridiculous speeds. I kind of mood. But also, as of, like, I think it's like the fourth day, like four days ago, um, a new gacha game uh, recently re- uh, recently came out. Uh, Magicka Record. Magicka Record is a gacha-style game um, based in the world of uh, Madoka Magica. Yeah, you know, you know that. And... Like, I started playing that because a lot of people, like, a lot of people were talking to me. It's like, hey, Lucky, you gonna play the, the, the um, Magic Care record? And I was like, and they literally whittled on me. <laughs> I succumbed to peer pressure. At first, I was like, nah, I got enough gacha games. I'm like, gonna just, all right, fine. I'll at least pre-register. Um, I'll at least pre-register, you know, just so support for the game. All right, all right. I'll play it a little bit to see if I like it. Yes, I'm playing it. I like it. I'm gonna keep playing it. They just... You ground, you ground me down, people. I hope you're happy. I'm sure they are somewhere, <laughs> somewhere out there. But it's I see. I've heard a lot of people say it's like kind of an FGO clone, and I can see where they make the comparison. But I can also think that it's different enough that I don't think it's directly fucking ripped from FGO. Like, um, you get like you can get, you can make like. Because, like, for one, it's not just a 1 by 3 line. It's a 3 by 3 grid. And you can have different uh, placements for your girls. And they come uh, for different bonuses. It does do the thing where you have, um... Each girl gets, like, a quote-unquote deck of five of moves. And it um, you have to choose three of them. And you can make combos and stuff. But what the, what the, um... What each card does is vastly... Well, not vastly different, but different from what um fgo does like they have an sell card because they do have their magic meter where they do a super move that you charge by doing damage or taking damage so that's just like an arts card they call it excel and if you get all three if you get three of them in a row um you get the excel bonus which gives everyone a like a 20 point boost again kind of like um fgo but the other two um one's called charge which is just an attack, but the thing that charge does is it starts a meter, and the more charge attacks that you stack in a row, the that the first attack that is not a charge attack gets a damage bonus, like based on your meter. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And if you like get all, if you get three of those in a row, um, you just get like a bonus to the charge meter. I think it adds like an additional plus two to it. The last one is called blast, which is literally a line attack. Um, through the enemy three by three squares, so you can like hit more than one enemy at a time, which I think is fucking great because that's always one of those things that bugged me about FGO. It's like, why can they hit all of me whenever they fucking want, and I have to like struggle for a fucking MP? Fuck you guys. That's one of those things that always bugged me. So I enjoy that. Like I said, like all your all your gotcha characters are all magical girls, so they're all like middle school to high school girls. I'm all like, oh, what a terrible fate you girls have. And, of course, starting off, they give you, um, of course, they had, like, you know, a starting campaign. Like, everyone who starts now gets, um, Homura with glasses. So it's the, you know, the, the, uh, shy one before she, like, ends up with time enough that she becomes a fucking badass. And they also have a fucking, um, gotcha, a rate up for both, uh, Mommy and Madoka. And I was like, actually, I did something I don't do very often is I actually restarted. Um, I re-rolled. Usually I don't care, but I'm like, God damn it, I want mommy. It's like, uh, your, your time was cut, uh, too short by a head. Ugh. So, um, I rerolled. I didn't get, like, I only rerolled once, and, cause I got Madoka on my next reroll, and I was like, 
all right, fine, whatever, whatever. I'll I'll make do. I got I got a rare one. Little did I know that like a couple of spins later, I get mommy as well, and I'm like, nope, I'm locked in. We are good to go, kaking. And it's fun. There's a lot to do in it. Like, um, cause like I will say this, like FGO, you could basically equip um cards to them to give them special effects. But unlike FGO, you can actually equip up to four total. Now they do this because um your the girls themselves don't have skills uh, per se. Instead, they have um what is called memoria with these memoria slots, and they get four slots: two for active skills and two for like passive effects. So basically, it adds a lot more customization because you get to pick what girls get what skills and what passive effects on this to like more fine tune your team. I'm pretty sure um the Magicka Record Wiki is blowing the fuck up right now. As people are all like, what is the most potent combo? But, as uh, as you also know by now, um, Lucky completely disregards the meta in favor of um, cute girls. Um, so, the game's not actually set in the city that Madoka managed. It's actually set in a another city, because specifically this game is called um, Magicka Record Side Story. It's something that's taking place like outside the um, actual series. And it seems it seems very on point. I actually got to see if Uro, the Uro Butcher actually wrote anything for this, because if he did, I'm gonna be very very concerned. Because uh, like if you guys haven't seen Madoka Magica, like I would definitely recommend it. Just and I don't want to give you any warnings because I think a lot of the appeal of Madoka Magica is the twists in it and the setup and everything. It's a little confusing, so after you get done, you might need to do some additional reading or, like, check the um, creator's Bible to see what the fuck was going on. But it's definitely an experience, and seeing this in a gacha game has me um, equal parts um, trepidatious and excited. Trepidatious? Is it trepidatious? Trepidatious. Words. Trepidatious. Thank you. Yeah, it's too busy. Yeah. But, I speak like, words good. Well, better than I do, at least. <laughs> well, so, Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <clears throat> We all have our moments. We all have our moments. So, oh yeah, like, I'm probably, I'll post probably, like, somewhere my actual player ID so people can follow me and watch me as I struggle to get good without having to rely on a wiki. No, hey, we've got a, we have a thing for that. We have a whole channel. Yeah, we do. But, um, yeah, so, so yeah, Magicka Record is keeping my attention, but right now I am, like, fooling, like, I'm playing, like, um, Azure Lane right now because I'm, like, as I said, I gotta gotta get through, gotta get things, and you know, get more ships. Gotta get more Vichia ships, Vichia domain. Mm -hmm. But also, <laughs> also Irish ships, because that's the store. Yep. Uh, is it's so Emil is the I assume that's pronounced Emil with my base basic bitch knowledge of French phenoms. But then uh, the the eight K one in the store is uh, Triumphant, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And yep. actually, it's... You get a, you is, get a drop here. Yeah, you can get some drops. Uh, I'm not going to check the Azure Lane wiki. Because I know that there is an Irish ship called... Uh, called Temeraire. Which I don't know if I know how to spell. Or tre is it Tremeraire? But uh, that's a book series I really need to read more of. But it's about uh, dragon riding. But that's the name of the dragon too. So I'm like, ah, well, shit. Now I have to roll this ship. Oh, you actually read that? Yeah, I've read like I read every book of that series. I've I haven't read, read all of them. Of I have, I, you know, library stuff. So I like, I got like two or three deep, and then I was like, well, shit, I can't find the next one. I think yeah. I have them I'm all them like up. lying on my hard drive, and I do have an ebook reader. So after I finish up my next course of books, I'll maybe I'll slap one in and read them. Because yeah, that was actually my first thought. Because it's because it's, it's kind of <laughs> it makes me angry. But when I think I know Timberer is an actual ship, but every time I hear the name, I'm all like, oh, it's a dragon. I'm like, god damn it. I think it's Yeah, it's Le, Le Temere. Le Temere. But the ship that I um, actually want, because yeah, nice. I've been, cause I've been sold it, on the, the full art. Um, the ship that I actually, I'll post the, I'll post an image too, because this is why I'm all about oh, super rare, okay. Because this is why I'm all about the Vichia Dom um, Dominion is one of the loading screens of, um, on Azure Lane showed the ship, I'm all like, who the fuck is this ship? So I had to look it up, and I found out... Work. There it is. Oh, guess um, come. Yeah. 
I was like, who is this? And she's part of the Vidya domain, so I actually started looking into her, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Unfortunately, yeah, as fucking uh, One Fat Panda, it's fun, it's like, that's in Project Research 2, when we also have, like, Frederick the Great and all the other ones, but I'm like, yeah, oh, damn that, it. that design, that's, to me, I'm like, this must be a priority design, because she's got, like, robot legs and hands and super cool stuff. I'm like, mm, <laughs> this, this, this is a research ship, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I love my robot waifus. Like, as I said, like, I'm probably gonna be pretty rolling hard for Kata Danzo and FDO. Uh, but god but, damn, prior- priority hurts. Like, there are people like, who've done multiple research ships. I'm like, how? How do you do this? What do you do with your life? Uh, it hurts. It's a lot um, of some, uh, uh, some people have, uh, straight up say, stated they have no life, so. Well, yeah, no. That might have to and it just, it. like, grind and then grind some more. Yes, accurate. Uh, let's see. Who did I? I think I, think, I want to make uh, sure to le- work on San Luis next. Yeah, I don't know who I want to work on after the, after I get done. But yeah, well, so for, I'm all for me, for... It, it, it it's San Luis or it's one of the one of the Japanese ones. I'd have to figure out which. I I need to check what they're. Yeah, Aizuma is the one I think I mentioned before. Yeah, so I'm definitely like I can't. I I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, particularly against any of the uh, Iris ships, but just for just to me and my personal aesthetic, it's all the Vichia Dominion. So it's like, ooh, yeah, like it's especially like John Bard. Wow. Oh, I just saw today that there's actually a Jean d'Arc fucking ship. Yeah. Well, of course there would be. She's the patron saint of France. Lucky, duh. Uh, yeah. I think we. Well, you never I... mentioned it again before, so shut the fuck up. Well, I'm trying to think. Uh, we definitely posted art of her, but I don't think we talked about her on the show. It was probably just a casual thing that, like, oh hey, this is coming out. Um, yeah. Like I think I saw it like today, actually. Hang on, I think. Yeah, well, no, it's been, po- there was a recent post in our discussion, because I think she shows up in one of the later story chapters, but, yeah, um, I definitely know yeah. I've seen her stats as a ship somewhere, but that may have been, like, a, because our, our community on Azure Lane is pretty dedicated, it was probably somebody shared a release from, like, China or Japan or something, if it was earlier. Uh, I'm just looking at her here, construction time cannot be constructed. Yeah, okay, so maybe that's. Is that a rerun special drop? Oh, okay, it's a placeholder. So yeah. she was only a CG. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. But look at the design. Oh, yeah, it's great. It It's a very good design. Uh, it's it's very much what I think the, the, the Free French, the Iris fleet is supposed to be, is like yeah. that, that super white, almost like uh, purity type. And of course it makes sense because it's Jean d'Arc, you know, a, a patron saint of France to have this kind of like pure flashy also i'm noticing a lot of the like there are a couple different ships but she's got that like flame effect on her legs and like that's cool mm. like uh, just cool. above that izumo has got that and uh now that i look at it uh latrimo rare also has like a weird heart effect thing on her feet i'm like that's cool that you're that you're doing artistic things with like the floating or whatever mm-hmm. but also if we, if we want to talk about um power level besides the armored skirt that's uh that's some severe absolute territory there. Yes, it is. It's good, Siv. Um, I definitely do want Jean d'Arc whenever. Because we got uh, Bismarck, finally, eventually. Yeah, no, they so. did it. And they g- they gave us her event. So I guess if she's... I Maybe it was when they played it before. I feel. I definitely feel like... When I say we, I mean the community. I don't necessarily insist that Lucky and I had this one-to-one conversation. I feel like I've definitely seen her art thrown around before. Possibly we did discuss it when we discussed Irish ships in general, but yeah, I didn't realize that. I did also did not realize she was tied to this event in any way, even as just a placeholder. Yeah. So uh, I had something else about that. I might have just really fucked space. Heck. Oh. Um. So actually, I remember now. So I am uh, thoroughly amused again by the loading screens because um, Azure Lane has a lot of loading screens, and they swap them out on a semi-regular basis, and um, one of them actually pops up, um, because I want to remind everyone, um, Azure Lane actually has two official mangas. One's called, um, um, Azure Lane, um, All Slow Ahead, or something like that, Slow Ahead, which is basically, you know, just almost a four-coma four comma format of, you know, all the ship girls doing a bunch of stuff, and it usually keeps really relevant up to, um, the events, like, I think their latest chapter, um, Bismarck appears, and she's talking about how she can't talk to uh, Tear Pits, and she even bought a dress for the occasion of talking to Tear Pits, and you're just like, oh my god, this is so amazing. 
But the other one is um, Azure Lane's Queen's Orders, which is basically based on the fact that Queen Elizabeth is set as the secretary ship and dealing with, like, her everyday hijinks. And I realized that one of the loading screens was actually done by the artist of um, Queen's Orders and has, like, all the like the, the big characters from it. And I'm like, oh, that's a nice touch. That's cool. That's super cool. Like I said, I really do like Azure Lane. I really, really do. It's like, why do you why do you take so much of my time? I need to learn how to play gotcha in my sleep. Ah, let's see. Anything else about gotcha game? So I talked we talked about Girl Frontline. I talked a little bit about Bandori. Uh talked a little bit talked about Azure Lane. FGO noses. That's all that's old old hat. Oh, actually that reminds me. Oh my god, you mentioned this yesterday, but you got an external memory card. Well not you well, got yeah, a memory yeah. card for I finally phone, right? I finally installed my I had a 32 gig memory, you know, micro SD sitting around, but I was like my phone didn't have an external expansion slot, so I finally got around to popping the case off and and slotting that in and now I have extra storage. So yeah, my phone can actually store things now. I was able to put Discord back on it for instance, I moved over some shit. Uh so yeah, I'm kind of like you you kinda, understand trying any more trying any more gacha games or you, I, I don't know about gacha, but I'm definitely hunting for more stuff to do to like kill the time like some of that i think when i finally get a switch will be some of that but just like something kind of like idle time to do and i've been kind of hunt and i haven't found anything really good so if anybody has any recommendations for stuff um like not like super intense but i wouldn't mind something strategy based to kind of play around with um or rpgs um i'm trying to check into like uh card game stuff too because i'm all about the cards but i haven't found anything super Interesting. Like, I know there's the Yu-Gi-Oh! one, but I'm like, it's like, and look at all these, it's like, there'll be voice actors and cool animations, like, I don't care about any of that shit anymore. I just want to play cards. <laughs> you're, you're trying to, like, nostalgia bait me. I don't care about that part. I can nostalgia bait myself. I just want to play card games. So if anybody has any recommendations for anything, like, on mobile, um, typically free, but, uh, you know, I'll take a look at, at low-cost stuff. Like, I think I've got in my, in my wish list the um, Final Fantasy Tactics on mobile. Because I don't feel like spending 11 bucks right now. And I want to double check that my phone runs it. That's kind of like, like I thought about it because I'm like, oh, hey, you know, Lucky talking about Vandori. And I'm like, oh, I, I know some songs. And I'm like, at the same time, I don't know if my phone would be great for a rhythm game. Yeah, I don't know how that works. So I'm like, I don't know. I might, I might skip that for now. Uh, and just kind of, you know, I'll see. I'll look for some stuff. I'll look at some recommendations. I got to be honest, Google Play Store is really unhelpful. When yeah. it comes to just recommending stuff, because it's just blobs of, like, the same five things over and over again. And I'm like, how many different versions of quote-unquote block puzzle are there? Because there are several. And they're ver they're both very highly downloaded and highly rated. I'm like, what? What even is the difference here? Also, I'm pretty sure there's, I've played it before, there's a default Tetris by somebody else in there. But I'll, I will pick up some sort of super, uh, mind bot, you know, mind-numbing game to play in my own time. I have also, I didn't download it last night because it was late and I didn't want to learn, but I'm also, now I am interested because of stuff they've done, what exactly the Ruby Arena game is on mobile. I'm like, mm -hmm. they have a couple. They had a deck building game, but that had like middle of the road reviews. I'm like, I'll skip it. Um, but they do have like what they call Amity Arena, which is like involves collecting characters and decks and things. I'm like, so did you make a gacha game? Um, so I want to download that and see what it's about. I don't know if I'll play it over time though. I don't know if I'm that invested in Ruby right now, but anyway, that's a, that's a different discussion. But yeah, I'm I am open to more mobile games of any variety in future. I don't necessarily if it's gotcha, it's got to be something super low yield. Like I'm not getting back into Fire Emblem Heroes. I'm like, mm. remember our gotcha games channel was was originally created for people to bitch about Fire Emblem Heroes, and still happens on a semi regular basis. Yeah, so I'm like, eh. that was always just something I. I literally did for funds just because FGO wasn't out yet, and I'm like, I can try these games. I'm like, I'm like, whatever. Roll some stuff, got some special promos, whatever. I got a couple lins, that's cool for me. But, like, it's got, like, PvP and all this extra metagame shit and, like, all kinds of other stuff. I'm like, I don't really... Fire Emblem Heroes really sounds like kind of a drag, and I'm glad I'm not sunk cost on it. So, we can talk about sunk cost later when we talk about other stuff. But yeah, so I'm, I am open to new things. There's some Star Wars stuff I could pick up, but at the same time, other than Commander, which I don't know if that would necess that's that's real time strategy, so that's not necessarily relaxing. Uh, I don't know if I'd really want to play them because Galaxy Heroes was I played that a decent amount. That one was kind of it's not r quite a gotcha game, but it's definitely in the same format where it's like okay, you got to bust your ass every day to get shit for free. Otherwise, if you want your super secret special Yoda character, just buy the stuff you need. I'm like, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it was kind of cool because it was pretty comprehensive, let's say. Like, you could collect characters for character battles, but you could also collect, like, ships for ship battles. <clears throat> um, and stuff like that, so it's... Like, that was cool, but at the same time, it was like, man, there's a lot of dumb subsystems in this, which really only exist, so you... It was one of those games that I felt like it was trying to give you lots of stuff to do so you could never leave and would always have something to do, but at the same time, you'd never get very far, you know? Like, um... How do I phrase it? Like, um... Like, you could only do so many, um, of their RPG-type, like, you know, party-on-party -party battles per day without buying more energy or whatever but then you'd go to a completely different thing and you could do so many of those, but it was all just an excuse so that you you didn't quite run out of stuff to do, but at the same time, you were always tempted to spend more to get more on specific things, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was never super invested in that game either. There was also, like, the, the other arena one that I wasn't... I tried a lot of Star Wars stuff back when I had a, 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 I had a really good, cool tablet that had lots of memory that <laughs> uh, bricked itself for no goddamn reason, which hurt me a lot, but... Oh, no. Uh, so like I tried a lot of mobile stuff on there. I'm just kind of eh about it. I was reminded though since Google did say does have a library of a lot of apps I'm downloading. Like, shit, dude, I d I tried a lot of different tarot apps. I'm gonna skip that on my phone. But yeah, uh, so that's mobile stuff. Right, so I don't know. Like I'm 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 always like I'm I'm always like randomly considering you know just getting a fucking clicker type game. Yeah, I mean, like, if if you just want some, like, I, the only reason why I'm not playing it anymore is because apparently, even though it has it linked to my Google account, it did not carry over my progress. But on my old phone, I had a, a gotcha-esque game that was, like, super, super, like, low-budget type stuff, but it was called, I think it's called, is it called Girls in Dungeons? It's a card-based game where you pick a character of a type when you go through a dungeon and you use simple cards, very basic shit. Um, but you summon team members or allies, uh, using gems, of course, because everything's gems. Um, and they're basically like monster girl archetypes with different arts. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. This is, this is kind of cute. And it's not super complex, but also I have absolutely no desire to spend money on this. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, and like, like I said, the literally the only reason why I didn't keep it downloaded on my new phone now is because it, it didn't carry over into my progress. And I'm like, that's kind of sad. I know I don't want to have to like bump through all this basic bitch shit again. So, like, I, I I, have a very low clear if something's just got basic gameplay loops I care about and isn't isn't going to sap my budget. Don't sap the budget. Yeah, we, t we talked about this some, uh, on Let's Talk FGO uh, uh, yesterday. I was looking for a time date there, but I got confused. Um, where we, we said that we need the this version of this Team Summer Sale gift, but with FGO. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's very true. Like, I... I I want to avoid that sort of situation. Like, Azure Lane is pretty good. I barely have ever needed to spend anything on Like, I've bought a couple Lucky Packs at appropriate times. That's about it. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've... Other than the initial purchase, I don't think I've ever spent money on Girls Frontline. Or if I did, it was very small. Like, I, I never felt the need to buy a shitload of gems to buy, like, a costume pack. I'm like, no, fuck you. I see what you're doing here. I refuse. I mean, I buy costumes if I have the gems lying around. Like when I bought the lucky bag for mm -hmm. um, things, I like I had the. Oh, gems actually, that I, I think I did, but that was mostly skin. discounted. That's right. So I've spent a little bit, but like normally, what they want you to spend money on, which is, and they're like, and if you for only for a either for a real money sum or for oh, if you just need eighteen hundred gems, you can buy this costume. I'm like, I see what you're doing here. That said, I'm perfectly okay with those because you could theoretically <laughs> save for like forever and actually get eighteen hundred gems. Unlike Azure Lane. Give me more gems, please. But, yeah, so... That's the whole thing. Um... Let's see here. So... Yeah, I think that might be it for Gotcha Games. Yep. Also, um, so... Let's see, what's a good transition to... From Gotcha Games? Video? Oh, I guess I can talk about this. Um, so, uh, Lucky, uh, pre-ordered Hecking, uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake, because one of my good friends and my ex gave me a, um, told me about a fucking 30% off coupon for our Amazon pre-order. I was like, oh that's, that's, my yeah, god. Yeah, that's big money, and, uh, Lucky, like a bro, immediately shared it. 
with everybody. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, it's one of those things where it's like, hmm, like because the way Amazon does pre-orders where they don't take my money right away, that always makes yeah. me nervous. So I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't like to pre-order usually this far in advance. But when you get a deal like that, like, um, like both of us said that, like technically with the discount, this deluxe edition cost less than the standard. So how could you not? Yeah. So it's like I was like ah, because like I I already knew like I knew I wasn't gonna have enough money to get the fucking super awesome edition with like fucking the cloud figurine or whatever. But I'm like I like steel books, I really do. And like the special edition comes can come with an art book. It's gonna have um actually what is what does the deluxe have? Uh, let me look. Let me let me pull it up here real quick. I've I've got it open because I was just thinking that myself. So you pre-order, you get an exclusive pre-order. Um. Chocobo Chick Sound Materia. You get the deluxe edition of the remake, which includes art book, mini soundtrack, uh, steel steel book, and two f- uh, summon materia DLC. We'll get Cactar and Carbuncle. Yeah, and you know, and I was looking at that. I'm like, that sounds solid, because I think it was like the original price was what seventy nine ninety nine, so it's like twenty bucks more than the like, yeah. standard edition. I was thinking about like 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 I fucking love art books. Uh, and that's actually, like- now that I'm thinking about it, I'm super glad because that's the. Like, first, I love art books. Steel books are cool, but also fucking soundtrack. Like, even if it's just, you know, a selection of some of the themes that are only in the remake, because we talked about that a lot, I think both off and on mic about the seven soundtrack and how cool that's going to be, but also how there literally won't be some songs in this first first version of the remake. Yeah. Uh, but that's also still going to be really rad because I love the the seven music. So it's a it was a really good fucking deal. Now I just got to make sure that uh, around right. Marchish. So, uh, I leave the money in my bank, which shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. So, like, I don't like I don't know exactly where she found it, and I, I kind of don't want to post the coupon link in our description, especially if I don't know exactly where it came from. I mean, it worked. Yeah, you. Depending on like time limiting and stuff, like we don't know when that's gonna like expire or anything. This won't yeah. be out for probably a day or two, so. Yeah, it's but not it's not that like, we're trying to like snow you out of a good deal we got, but now we're in like a is this really the sort of thing that we should put out there considering we don't necessarily know the circumstances anymore, you know? Yeah. So, but if you're listening like like don't worry like it's just I guess the point I want to make is there's deals out there if you look for them. Like yeah, and hey, stuff like uh, this. Uh, next time a deal happens, if you join our Discord, maybe you'll be there in a moment when Lucky is like, "Yo guys, check this out." mm mm-hmm. Mhm. So, yeah, so that's that's basically one game on lockdown out of the fucking mini we have to do. I actually, like, I have to remember to actually, like, look up all the games and the prospective release dates and try to narrow down which ones I actually want, like, immediately. Yeah, I added a few to, like, my Amazon wish list, but that reminds me, I got some other stuff I gotta check. Yeah, I got, I, yeah, I'm gonna probably add them all to my wish list, but... Right, because, you, like, you know, n- nothing ever hurts you if you just hold on to it for a little bit. And then you're like, okay, I can buy this later. Or if you're not interested in buying a game right away, you can sit on it. Yeah. So it's just like, mm, because I know next spring, uh, for sure, it's going to be Final Fantasy VII. And, um, Which reminds me, I need to remove the regular Final Fantasy VII version from my wish list. Oh, yeah. So let's see. So. And uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Mm-hmm. But this fall, this, still, this fall is still up all up in the air. It's like, god damn. Yeah, so... The Trail Humans will come out sometime. The Outer Worlds will be released. That's probably a good one. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 stalking some stuff in there. Let's see. Uh, I bet I should stock more stuff. I got Borderlands Three in here. I got Outer I Worlds. Got, got so Cyberpunk. Far. Got Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, let's. I might open up a new notepad. Actually, I'd have to. Yeah, yeah I'd have to like double check all the stuff that uh, that was coming out that I'm interested in. Like, I don't think I've got... Let me check. I don't think Watch Dogs Legion was available yet when I tried. Because that's on my list of things. All right, here we go. So, Watch Dogs Legion. When's that going to be released? That'll be released March 6th. So, that's the oh. other March game I'm thinking of. People have been thinking of. I'll put that on the list. I'm and, like, for me, like, Legion is probably not a day one buy. Like, I'm not going to pre-order that. Nah. Nah. Like, if I was going to pre-order anything, Final Fantasy VII is one of them. I was just planning on doing it a little sooner to release, like I did with Kingdom Hearts 3. And then Cyberpunk. Like, those are games that no matter what people say they're going to be, I'm going to play them anyway. You know? <laughs> like, no, no matter what happens between now and then, there's no way I'm not going to at least try it, and I will probably have fun anyway. Actually, I um, actually read something interesting. Um, So, 
in uh, Cyberpunk 2077, actually, um, that scene where um, Johnny Silverhand shows up, apparently he's a fucking digital ghost. Because he died back in um, one of the... Apparently he actually died back in um, 2020. Yeah, I believe that that's... So, that's supposed to be something like that might that might be what the the meta plot of the the game is about is like the the chip you find is a like quote unquote immortality chip to like perfectly digitize the human consciousness or something. Yeah. So, but, like, and because also because um, Lucky does like to actually read up on game news and articles and stuff. They were actually talking about like how your interaction because this means that literally Johnny Silverhand is gonna be with you basically your entire. Um, campaign. He's going to be almost your number one companion, and you're going to have a lot of interactions with him. That's super cool. So, I also really wonder if, like, because that was a choice before that your your idol could be. I wonder if that might change still. Mm-hmm. But at the very least, it's super. I mean, who the fuck is now that we know that Johnny Silverhand is Keanu Reeves? Who the fuck is not going to pick that guy? Yeah, That's I am rad. all for this. So um... I guess speaking of Final Fantasy VII and game news, do we want to talk about the? Mini controversy of stupidity. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so we'll put our commentary on. I think this is mostly blown over because people actually finally got sense. But, you know, sometimes with social media stuff, people don't check on, like, retractions, corrections, and updates. So there was a, I believe it was originally in Famitsu, which is Japanese in origin. There is an interview with Nomura um, where they talked about some design. And as you would expect from a Japanese media outlet, um, Famitsu asked him about Tifa's boobs. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of fucking of course they did and then so it was somewhat mistranslated there were some there were some questions about what he said i believe double checking with reliable sources who know it japanese the most accurate translation is more like so basically they asked like so when you're talking about costume designs how did you know the size of tifa's chest enter that and so he's like Okay, so we did some talk with our modeling, and then, like, our our internal ethics committee, who helps us review games uh, for, like, rating and stuff, was like, hey, can we make it so her her bosoms do not f- f- flop everywhere? Which, at certain points, her model did in the original, uh, certain mm-hmm. versions of her model. And the the design team was like, okay, we're, we're because we're, you know, we're giving her an athletic figure, right? You can see her abs now. We want to make sure she stays looking sporty, so we made sure to secure her chest in her ca- her art design, basically. Hence why she's wearing a sports bra under the tank top now. Um, this was somewhat misconstrued by rough uh, shooting from the hip translations that there was a quote-unquote ethics department at Square that made Nomura make her boobs actually smaller. This is not necessarily true. It was a decision in review with their... Like, calling an ethics committee sounds really weird, but, like, if you've been to college recently, ethics is in everything. Like, literally. It's it's kind of a huge deal. Um, so that's probably just what they call it, and that's, like, figuring out how stuff stays rated certain ways, and they came to the mutual decision together that, like, yeah, this is no longer the late 90s. Her model should not be flopping around like that. Let's give her a realistic look and, like, secure everything properly with her costume. Which yep. I'm okay with. Like, I, I know some people have been like, oh, OMG, they nerfed Tifa's Tifa's, but I don't think they really did. They just, like I said, they gave a slightly more realistic thing where they, like, put some shit together. I saw, I think, a great um, image from a cosplayer who, like, explained how wearing different clothings can affect the shape yeah. of that anatomy a lot. Like, she dressed down in, like, a sports uh, a sports top and, like, I think, like a, like, a compression bra or something. It was a video, but I wasn't listening. I was just really quick what the fuck is this and then it's like oh she looks really lean and flat then she switches to like a push-up corset corset and like oh my god they're huge uh so hey there's some physics involved and oh yeah apparently final fantasy 7 remake went with uh oh yeah f- uh physics will actually matter so hey tifa's gonna be doing fucking flip kicks and uppercuts she needs some support it's okay pleated skirt it's why she got actual armor on her fist like the girl's taking care of herself she's not a fucking idiot yeah but also, hey, good news, Lucky. Uh, that Famitsu uh, interview confirmed the cross-dressing sections are staying in. Oh, yeah. And because they, they, they were talking about costuming and accessories. Anything. And it's like, nope, we're doing that. Uh, yeah. Nomura hinted that they're probably going to, like, both in the Japanese side of the writing and then I assume in the English translation, they're going to, like, change how some of that's set up so it does not seem as skeevy. 
Yeah. Because there were parts that were questionably, both in English and Japanese, there were parts that were questionably scripted, but it's it stayed in. So, hey, um, just wait for all those fucking high-res girl cloud screen, screenshots. Mm-hmm. They're gonna happen. But yeah, so that that was just a little mini thing that I think mostly blew over. Though that does remind me, we didn't actually say why we didn't do What's Up last week. Oh. We we should probably just mention it. The short version is uh, we were tired and didn't really have anything to talk about. So I think, let's see, I'd have to scroll up to find the exact thing. I don't remember if it was unprompted or not, but I basically started it by saying, like, I'm kind of tired and I don't really have anything to talk about. So if you don't want to record tonight, that's okay. And then you were like, yeah, sure, I'm going to go work on my car. And then you were like, one or two hours later, you immediately came back to me and were like, holy shit, I'm super tired. And I'm like, the right choice was made today. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, basically, we didn't have anything that really drove us to talk. Like, I could have talked about slash complained about Horizon Zero Dawn for, like, maybe 30 minutes. Um, I haven't been playing Zero Dawn a lot lately, but that's because I've been... Because I did actually watch anime, which I'm sure we will we will talk about because Lucky's super excited. And I know several people in the channel, when I mentioned what I was doing, were like, oh, I've also been watching that, so that's good. But, um, hey, I can't, I can't watch anime and play video games at the same time. At least not on my PS4 video games. That doesn't work. You, I need to read. read. Like, I guess I could have powered through the second season of Agretzico because that has a really good English dub that I like, but I I, I haven't tried the, the English dub for Kakiguri. I'm not sure it will be quite the same. Yeah. I, I might, because I still want to go back and watch the first season. I did not have enough time to do that. I, I might try that in English just to see what it's like when I have time, but there's still a lot of, like, net. Netflix is blowing up. There's like, uh, there's some new anime. There's a new season of uh, Jessica Jones. There's a new season of Dope, which is a documentary series I watch. There's, I don't think it's out yet, but in July there's going to be a new season of Stranger Things. So like, there's a, there's a lot of new stuff coming out. Um, it won't be all at once, but we're about to start uh, Case Files. Oh yeah, we're about to hit that new core of anime. So yeah, that's that's a big deal. Um, so like, I don't know if I have time for that, but basically. I feel like Z I like as a game. I like Zero Dawn a lot, and I kind of like the plot. But it has the problem that for me that all of these types of games have, which is you travel the next fifty feet, you run into a new settlement, you immediately have to do like fifty bazillion different things, um, which are new and pop up, and you're like, "Hey, look at all these new quests you can do! Look at all this shit you can explore!" And then it kind of distracts you from what you're doing. But at the same time, you don't want to necessarily power through and come back and do them later because then you're like super over leveled, and you're like, "Wow, this is really easy, and this isn't, I uh, this isn't interesting anymore." So it has a problem I have with these types of games where I tend to get lost in them. I am sure I will eventually get back there and and work on it. I just haven't been in the mood lately and like been doing other stuff. Also, rock breakers are bullshit. <laughs> that, that was a at least the story mandated one where you go into the quarry. That was like real bullshit. I I eventually had to go like, "Is there a fucking exit to this scenario?" and was like. Oh, hey, there's a gap in this fence around there. I'm going to go jump off a cliff to get away from this and come back later. <laughs> Which uh, I then immediately proceeded to circle back around, get on, a, get on a ledge, and cheese the fuck out of him, and I don't even care, because goddamn, that was bullshit. Oh. But anyway, yeah. I Let's see, video game stuff. We got video games that are coming out. Yeah, I'm actually looking, like, I'm actually, like, writing them down, because we have Borderlands coming, the Borderlands 3 coming September 13th, Outer Worlds, uh, October 25th, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to find some news on the, oh yeah, we have Death Stranding, um, uh, coming out November 8th, it's like, cool boy, I'll write that one down too. I mean, I don't know if this is on your radar, but, um, Kill a Kill IF by Arxis Works is coming out, uh, July 26th also. Oh, this month? I mean, next month? Yeah, next month, July 26th. Oh, wow. I yeah. didn't know it was like, I was... No, it's soon. It, it's been oh, flying I... under the radar. I only just remembered today to, like, put it on my wish list so I can track it. Well, I'm gonna have to look into it and see how that is. But yeah, like, uh, what is that? Warfare... I still haven't seen any news on the modern warfare. So no, I don't think there's been any more details. Yeah, it says October 25th, so same day as Outer Worlds. That'll be interesting. But I might look into that later. Because, again, I like Modern Warfare for its story, not so much for its multiplayer. 
Yeah, that's probably uh, for you. That's probably not a priority to buy because you don't yeah. fucking care what people are doing in multiplayer or anything. Mm-hmm. That uh, I'll worry about spring here in a bit. Yeah, between September 13th and um, November 1st, that's a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Well, there's always lots of games, but, you know, th- because yeah, so. uh, this is a good year for games, it seems, like, so daunting, I think. Ugh. Let's, yeah, I'll leave that alone. I'll work on that later. So I'm right those quick ones down so I did not forget. So, close Amazon before I attempt to fucking out snacks and shit. Um, so, yeah, I watched, um, we, we mentioned this, so... I watched the second season of uh, Kakaguri um, last week, and I was all like, some good shit. And you oh, yeah. said you just like what, finished it like yesterday or today? Yeah, just today. I was going to finish yeah. it last night, but I was too tired after doing the show. So I'll say this. I watch Kakaguri for one of two reasons, depending on the scene. Um, I watch it either for the the pure pathos, just the emotional responses and contortions of these characters in their, not just the drama but the like melodrama of literally everybody as they get <laughs> into this shenanigans like <laughs> and this kind of like over the top emotional stuff that i think you can only pull off an anime like i'd have to check what the live action kakeguri does because like some of these faces i don't think you could pull off in real life and be taken seriously and arguably you can't in the anime but what? it's it's still animated so it works like yumiko's just like i'm fucking done with you faces yeah <laughs> I'm sorry, Suzuki san What are you talking to? I don't see anybody there. <laughs> like, no. like, oh, that's terrible. You <laughs> fucked up twice. <laughs> oh, but so that's that's one half of it. And the other part is I I am a quintessential gamesman. I love the games of all types. So I just love mm. the gambles. Like, I once again, um, interesting enough. You, I, I don't know if you know this, but um, I think the the final the final games for both seasons were made up for the anime. To basically space time because I don't think the manga's done yet. Still, uh, I don't think so either. There's like basically the first season was the first arc of the student council. The second season is the first half of the arc with the election, which presumably there will be a third season because apparently the uh, the manga makes Kakiguri a shitload of money, and there's like two or three spinoff mangas now. Um, so like I'm presuming the anime will come back for a third season once they can make sure they can produce another season's worth of arc. And yeah. deal with all those characters we didn't do, but I feel like the the uh, the election auction was kind of a week as far as games go, but the the psychology part worked. Oh yeah, I liked it. Like the game part was good, but when you like, and also I totally called it as like that dude's not a dude. Uh, were uh, we supposed to assume that Ray was male? I think so. Yeah. Well, no, I completely missed that. I was like, that's a girl dressed as a dressed in a boy's uniform. Oh yeah, but I, you know, I I am an aficionado of contraltos, so <laughs> I don't know. That you know, wasn't a reveal to me, but yeah, I, I know because it was basically the way that they presented her. You know, like all the girls fawning over her. You know, well, like, here's the thing to remember, Lucky Kakiguri is very gay. It's super gay. It, I the, know the the author is supposedly a fan of the fan of the Yuri genre, and it shows. Um, it the shows. Ta- by the way, the tower sequence was amazing. I love. I love the that was oh, great. Ta- I love the tower. That 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 ending, like, that was moving. I'm like, ooh, that's good. Which is kind of why I feel like, because the psychological game aspect of that wasn't the strongest, but it tied in really well to the characters. Mm-hmm. And, like, another thing that, I, this was also in, in the manga, the actual carrying over the, uh, the like, following Sayaka as, as the point of view character for most of it, that was real good. Mm-hmm. But the ending was great. Um, it's, good, it's good to get in the heads of other people. Not that Especially really because, gonna... much like Suzui, I think Sayaka is the only person uh, bordering on sane in this fucking academy. Uh, which is another thing I, I do Mary's love. I do of... love that everybody is fucking nuts here. Like, and as a character, that's know. really Suzui's only. Fucking... Mary's pretty sane. Mary's functional, but and she's gotten better. But like, she she has been crazier in the past, and like, she has a prequel manga that's one of the oh, spinoffs okay. where apparently we get to see how she goes from being a normal scholarship student with friends to being the first villain of the show basically so like i'm wondering if maybe they'll adapt that into an anime eventually that might be interesting but like she's she's probably not as crazy as the characters but she's definitely not like a moral compass anymore either oh no 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 she definitely has her own goals and stuff but she works in alignment question mark with to um well yeah she's managed uh, to kind of 
as the first person Yumiko really beat, I think she was the one who got Yumiko's character the best, which it shocks me. People still don't understand that girl. It's simple. She just loves the RNG. That's all she wants, which is why she gets pissed off at, um, I uh, think they really sold that well, the well with the first, um, game. Right, when, the guillotine. The, yeah. I can't remember the eye patch girl's name. But when she cut two, she was like, you just ruined a fucking 50-50% chance. That was a what perfect 50-50, you son of a bitch. I will, <laughs> I will literally never speak to you again. <laughs> because her, that character's flaw, and like I said, I can't remember her name right now off the top of my head. There's a lot of fucking names, okay? Yeah. I'm not good with them, but I patch a girl's flaw is that she's a masochist, so she, she intentionally wants to lose. That was the whole point of her arc in the first season. So, like, she doesn't care about winning. She just wants to suffer. And it's really interesting that she tries to use Yubiko as her instrument of suffering, and it doesn't work because Yubiko's like, I'm not a sadist. I just love RNG. And also, I love when people are honest with themselves because all your psychological lies and shit suck. I, like, I think the most profound psychological experiment, though, was probably the For the Greater Good game. That was great. I Like I said, that was another thing where I'm like, as a game, this one, I don't know how compelling it is. But as once again, as a psychology study, this is great. Yeah. Um, another thing that was good was the fact that, once again, our viewpoint character was different. We didn't get to see Yumiko's internal monologue. We got Sumeragi, and she was the fucking traitor, dude. <laughs> like I'm like, that I did not she- expect, because <laughs> she was talking to the audience. I'm like, did, were you were you playing so deep a game that you lied to yourself? Like, wow, well, damn. I think, it, I think like it was the thing of either way, she felt she would have she would have won, but she also would have lost. So, well, yeah, just, that was the whole thing was she she set up an interesting scenario which I liked because yeah. um, what's his face uh, Manuda was like I don't understand, it's and. Yumiko was like, no, l- listen, dumbass. She set it up so that either way she wins. If if you lose because you're you are the one character who has been completely broken by losing, absolutely. Like the his you know, his glasses exploded and his hair turned white. I think <laughs> he's the character who is most emotionally devastated by his loss. Not that we should feel super sympathetic because he was kind of an asshole, but still, like he took it the uh, hardest. Um oh, yeah. But like, if, I will, I if, will, I will say though, um, character designs in this still top notch. I can't remember her name, but the tra- the traitor that went along with Sumeragi, mm. Miroslava, yeah, the one who's clear. Like, I think it's implied because, like, it's questionable is like Mary non Japanese in ancestry because her name isn't written in like a foreign style. Um, yeah, but she's you know blonde. Um, with a name like Miroslava, you're like, okay, so you're also, she's huge and has huge guts. Uh, you're clearly Russian on some level, but yeah, so that was a, all the, all the Bami clan members have good character designs, which is good because there's a shitload of them. What's crazy though, what I like about is every time, like, you get in a game, they always say, this family, we specialize in this, like, we specialize in torture and fucking pharmaceuticals. In, uh, what was Miroslava's? Cleaning, question marks. Cleaning, cleaning, and you're just all like, this is a very dark, dark clan. No, they, (laughs) well, this is why the, this is why the student council president can, can set up your fucking life plan where it's like, hey, this is exactly how you're going to live your life for my political benefit because I'm secretly in charge of the Japanese underworld or something. But I don't really care about it. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't harsh the student council president. I love her character too because she's, just as fucking crazy as Yuiko, and it's like, like, when, in the final game, when Toronto's like, but that that girl's from an exiled clan, there's no way that you'd actually let her win, right? The president's like, um, I'm sorry, did you fucking, did I fucking stutter? <laughs> no. <laughs> the one who wins, wins. Also, really interesting that, um, Toronto has a sister who is, uh, a Gyaru type design, like, she's tanned, presumably bleach mm-hmm. blonde hair, who just Seems like an okay girl, and just, you know, uh, is responsible for wheeling her sister around. And I'm like, that's nice. I like I like that some of these characters have these relationships. Yeah. There's the two, the, the second pair that we, we meet, the Poisoners, who are revealed to be sisters, but they have different last names, so clearly they got split up somehow. Um, mm. And, like, the, that was a hard-hitting scene because of the way that things turned out, but, like... Mm. 
at the same time, like, they still had that relationship and that deep bond, right? Yeah. It's like they had a deep bond they could communicate almost telepathically. Right. They know ex- They say it started as a game to, like, communicate via sign language, but I know uh, that's more common with, like, twins, but I know that that's a thing that people do. Also, hey, I think it was, I think this was the first time it was revealed that the, the, that not only does she look similar enough that the uh, the president can wear her mask, but the vice president is literally the president's twin. I think that I think this is the and first time that's cute. come up. Well, yeah, when she takes her mask off, she gets adorable. But also, did, did Mary actually punch her? I'm trying to remember. That I was don't remember that it. was the stakes, but I don't think it was ever shown on screen. That's the thing. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to wait for a, a third season to see where that subplot's going. Unfortunately. Also, again, I really like the OP. I'm like, yes, this is the no. The OP was really good. They, they, they. You can tell that this this is a show that comes from a background that has lots of money because they don't spare the animation budget. Like, every every, when people do their reactions, uh, they do those like super detailed stuff, and it works. And also, they don't forget the little details. Like, like you don't see Sumeragi a whole lot during this season, but her fingers are still bandaged, and she's still you know, shown as, like, bleeding because she ripped her fingernails off. Yep. Like, th- you get yeah, all those little uh, details. Yeah, it's Mappa, and Mappa does good work. Mm-hmm. They do hella good work. What else is But yeah, so Kakegori is really good, and I, I watch it for, for those reasons, but at the same time, that means I have to be in a certain mindset, because if I'm, like, sleepy, I can't appreciate the games because I'm trying to follow this shit. <laughs> uh, but luckily, it was only, well, not luckily, because I'm sad because there's still more to go, but it's not a super long season. It was only 12 episodes, so it was pretty easy to power through once I got started. And I finished it up today. I think I think my favorite part of the arc was the tower game, just because that was, that was like... Well, first of all, it's explicitly not about this election bullshit, right? Like, yeah, it's, but- it's... But it's deeply personal between the two characters. So it, it revealed a lot about our supporting cast, and it didn't end terribly. Because you, you, feel, you feel very sad for that girl. Uh, yeah. as, like especially as she gets to the end, and she's like, "Well, gonna jump." Bah. And like, as far as you know, you're watching a character commit suicide on screen, and you're like, mm. "Man, this is heavy." But then it's super sweet after. And then the president and they jumps f- after, and you're like, "What?" And there's a cushion, and also they fell into a field of lilies. Hmm. Hmm. Though I will say, their character relationship, Saika and the president, works out really well because, like she says, "You're so you're so." logical and rational and everything like that's super interesting to me because clearly i'm a fucking lunatic like they they have good chemistry uh, as i say opposite the track mm-hmm. so uh, i do feel kind of bad that in this season i feel like suzui didn't do as much like i get that his job is kind of to be our our surrogate that he introduced or the watson to like he's not as good at this as like saotomi and yumiko are like but he works for people to bounce ideas off of. But he like, also, honestly, in the I first season, I think he had a... more he had more scenes where he was like, shit, I'm picking up this game, Blim Thin. Like, I don't think feel oh, like yeah, he did I that a lot it, this season. Like, and the the card game with the uh, pharmaceutical twins, he definitely had a moment. Right, he, he reestablished, that, because that was an early arc, he reestablishes his character that his trick to win is that he trusts his friends implicitly and thus works because that's a that's a thing lots of like lots of the the quote-unquote villains do now that we should necessarily because that was the thing i think i was going to mention that talking about like um manuda when he actually confronts yumiko and she's like hey do you feel guilty about completely obliterating my life and yumiko is like i feel bad that i don't feel bad (laughs) but that totally fits her character because look dude you didn't you bet everything with her you played the game you didn't have to do that, so yeah. of course she doesn't feel bad. She just won. She doesn't feel bad when she loses either. As seen when she uh, drops the th- the three billion yen, which that's got to be several million US, like several tens of millions of US dollars, if not hundreds of millions. Mm-hmm. Um, just to be like, hey, can you sh- can you show me your real face though now? I like that's quintessential Yumiko. Mm-hmm. The m- the money is meaningless. I just want to play the it's real all about game. that gamble. But yeah, like, so I, like, do, I, I do enjoy that. Like, um, they started the se- this season in media red. Yeah, like, that was already. great for me. I think I said that when I started watching the first episode. I'm like, this is a powerful start. I'm like, yep, this is Kakagudri. We're going to play a fucking guillotine chicken game with our fingers. Sure. 
And I was not necessarily and 100% like, sure that nobody was going to lose a fucking finger. Because yeah, that's, so, that's one thing this show does, is it actually pays off those stakes. <laughs> like, um, Yumimite broke her finger. We talked about Sumeragi still got her fingernails ripped off. Mm-hmm. Like, they... Um, heck, um, Eye Patch Girl wasn't always Eye Patch Girl. She gouged her own eye out. Ugh. Which was it's super visceral, yeah. Like, this this show doesn't pull punches with some of the punishments. Yeah. So, like like I said, I wasn't sure that nobody was going to lose a finger, but you're right. That was a great in-media res. And then, then, then in the second accept- half, we kind of, like, explain. Uh, so, but so yeah, this I is would- kind of why I kind of like, um, this is why I like my week-to-week watch because i can always get a little bit every week instead of binging it all at once I'm like now what am i supposed to do because like i said like i said we're about to come up on a new core here we got actually a lot like we got a lot of interesting stuff uh coming out actually let me pull up a list here because i'm gonna see if i can sell omega on anything i know he's gonna watch case files right for reason though one thing i did want to say earlier was the the point i was oh. i was originally talking about while you're looking at that list was i want to circle back to that's something that the quote unquote villains do is like they will often manipulate the situation by teaming up, by colluding, by trusting people. So like that's cool that that's like Suzui's move. But like you get to the the auction, which I admit, once again, that was created specifically so the anime season could have an actual ending to an arc, which makes mm-hmm. sense. But like he's completely fucking useless. He's like, why the fuck am I here? I have 13. I can't <laughs> bid at all. And I'm I like, do you think it's good that when when a character recognizes like what the fuck I'm doing here? Right, that's good for him. That's because that sets that he he is not completely in this level. Like as as far as gamble crazy goes, like Mary's a lost cause almost. Like she's like, sure, I'll jump the fuck in. I'll bid ninety nine votes or whatever. I'll you know do all this crazy stuff. Um, but Suzuki's still like, shit, dude, I can't help at all. And then he, I think he lost like ten of his votes too. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, Yumiko foreshadowed that having only a few votes at the end might actually matter, which I'm sure will totally come back. Uh, let's see. Oh, hi. So, yeah, so, actually, isn't, I don't see Heki. Isn't Boku no Hero Academia supposed to fucking start up this summer? I heard that that's still fall, so I'm not sure. If it's oh, not on the list, then it probably is fall. It probably is fall, then, okay, it must have got pushed back. Well, a delay is a delay. That was the one, I'm going to lie, that was one of the big things I was, I was... That would be another 100% guarantee from Omega, yeah? Uh, let's see here. So, coming up here, um, this summer, we got the, finally, the second season of Is It Okay to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon. Like, I always really like that. Uh, let's see here, Dr. Stone, which apparently is really fucking popular. I've, I've never, I've honestly never heard of it. I do know of the artist, though, um, Boichi. <laughs> Because I've read some of their works, uh, specifically uh, Sun Ken Rock. And I really like his art style. So, kind of curious to see that in the anime. Uh, we got Ardi Ferretta, which is going to be Maximum Edge for a while, then it's going to turn into a harem hijink. Vinland Saga, uh, what is being known as Fire Force, which is being made from the, which is a new manga. An anime based on a new manga from the guy who made uh, Soul Eater. We got uh, Accelerator from, you know, fucking... See here. God, what is it? A certain um, magical index. A certain railgun. It's that universe. Second season of Teasing Master Takagi-san. Motherfucking Case Files. Uh, that's a 100% right away. I'll tell you that right now. I'm excited. Have you seen the um the uh, the, the the trailer for it? No, I did not watch the new trailer. Yeah, you should, you should check it out. But that airs in, uh, let's see here, seven days. So about a week. It's being put out by Troika. Well, it's a joint work between Troika and UFO Table, but the main, um, main animation is being done by Troika. And they do good work. They really do do good work. Yeah, I heard from the trailer that I think they're supposed to be maybe like a, uh, kind of a, they're gonna sh- start with kind of a flashback to how Waver got his position, which would be, around the end of zero so that might that might make some sense for uvo table to be involved if they're gonna like if there will be any flashbacks yeah. or inspiration from zero which was animated by them yeah Let's see it's a kind of magician dumb dumbbell non kilo moteru this one's fun i read the manga for this one this is basically an anime it's gonna be well it's a manga about lifting weights and being healthy 
It's kind of amazing. It's an anime about the world of fitness. I think I'm going to watch it just because it's going to be entertaining. Yeah, that might be. I don't know. I was just I, in a completely unrelated conversation. I was just thinking to myself, there's nothing more dramatic and intense than a gaming anime, right? <laughs> like yeah. fitness is probably the same. Like they they take uh that what you call it um that that drama to the highest levels. So, uh, after that, another one, big one for me, probably not for Omega, but is um, Okasan Online. So many people are just like, oh my god, incest! And then they just, you know, refuse to touch it with a 10-foot pole, and they're like, ha 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 ha, filthy cash. Uh, let's see here. A lot of, there's a lot of stuff, but actually the more I look at it, like, there's not a lot of stuff that super jumps out to me. I mean, uh, listen, there's one another one I know I'm gonna watch, because I love, I fucking love the, um, the uh, manga. It's um, if it was for my daughter, I even take on a um, demon lord. It's about a adventurer who finds the demon lord's daughter and becomes completely, completely infatuated with her and spoils her. Great, it makes me feel happy. Simple Gear. I actually mentioned that. Like, I never actually watched any of that. What is that about? It's apparently it's on its fifth fucking season. Is it crazy good? Let's see. Try Nights. That's wow. That's done by. Oh, that's being by done by Gonzo. It's a rugby anime. <laughs> kind of crazy. Things left over. Yeah, so I don't know, like, I'm kind of hoping, like, what happened, like, um, in the spring will happen again in just some of these titles, because, you know me, I'll just, like, sample animes as they come out, I'm like, oh, what's this about, what's this about? So I hope, you know, I'll sample them as they come out, I hope some of these surprises, because otherwise I'm kind of feeling meh about a lot of these titles, I can only see, like, three or four that I would watch, like, like, like I'm like, yes, lock this in for me. I don't know. Yeah, there's, like, nothing I can actually, like, Omega, you gotta watch this, bro. Yeah, I don't know, like... I'm I'm a fan of the like the three episode test, right? So yeah. like it may be that some of these are pretty good and we'll catch that out later. But you're right, none of these really super jump out at me as, as super interesting other than case files. That's like, well, I'm I know I'm pre invested in that. Uh yeah. Uh, but as I said, we're getting into that and we're getting into it. Like Mappa's doing another anime uh this uh next quarter um to the abandoned sacred which looks interesting in manga, but you never know how how things are done out in anime. So we will see. Uh, yeah, gonna be looking. Trust me. Um, and by like next week and the week after, as all these episodes come out, I'll let you get. I'll let you guys know my thoughts. <laughs> all right. So we talked gotcha. We talked video games. Well, I should we also because I did watch all of it. I watched all of the second season of Gretzko, which yeah, is out on okay. Netflix now. Uh, it's still pretty good. Still pretty funny. Um, this one I think even more so than the first season deals a lot more with. Uh, uh, Retsuko's, uh, like, relationship troubles, which, uh, at least for me anyway, kind of hurts the relatability a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, she has to deal with her mother trying to pressure her into, like, matches and stuff to, to maybe end the marriage, and I'm like, okay, this ha I live in America, and I don't have that problem, so that's, like, <laughs> that's very unrelatable to me. I'm sure that some people in Japan will find it more relatable, but it's 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 much more on her personal life than her uh work life. There's still some relatable stuff in there, but it, I feel like it's not not as close. And like, there's some stuff that's even more absurd in like the second half, but it's still super entertaining and kind of heartwarming. Um, Retsuko doesn't sing as many angry songs on this one. She has <laughs> less to be angry about, but more like um conflicted. Uh, but more characters, if you like that in the last season, more characters get their own song inserts, which are not necessarily metal genre like. There's some some uh, rap or even pop themed like emotional outbursts and stuff, and some of it's still pretty good. So check it out if you haven't already. The episodes are literally only fifteen to ten minutes every time, so it's a it's a quick breeze, and it's adorable. But yeah, so that's that's what I've been doing. I haven't really watched anything else I can talk on lately, and so we'll be sure to hit up more people with anime as it comes out. Yeah. I don't know whether we'll gush about case files here or on Let's Talk FGO, but expect that in the future. Uh, yeah, let's see. I don't know. What's next? We've all, we've been only going for going for like an hour and a half. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I particularly want to talk about. Um, so I could mention, because I like to do that, that um, there's a new L5R book which has come out. Courts of Stone actually came out. Uh, super cool. A lot more ninja focused than I thought it would be. I thought, but there's plenty of social stuff in there, so that's pretty fun. Um, once it's out in PDF, I'll be sure to post a review video like I usually do and talk about it. 
But uh, a lot of concept seems fun. Seems like it addresses some some uh, questions people have had about rules and stuff through expansion. So it looks pretty cool. We'll talk more about that later. I still don't necessarily know what uh, what Lucky's Japanese samurai persona is yet. So I don't I don't know if I want to like forward the book to him or not right away. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't necessarily know what type of character archetype you'd want to be. But yeah, so uh, look forward to that. Let's see. I don't know. I'm not really doing anything. I'm not really doing anything new games wise. Otherwise, with like core video games, we talked a lot about stuff we're planning on buying later. Uh, see anything we gotta mention about Mages of War? We had this weird, really weird, just long break on Mages of War. Yeah, we just I don't know. We got busy with some stuff. Like, I think part of it was our schedule got a little weird because we spent so much time on E3. Yeah, that's probably it. Like in big blocks, so that got kind of weird. We kind of had to like reset and find ourselves, figure out what we're doing. I mean, I yeah, like I'm. Well, we're getting back into it. Entire entire last session was literally nothing but logistics and planning. And I was okay Which, with that. Yeah, me too. Because uh, you went into that session tired, and it was just like, hmm. Yeah, I warned everybody that I might run out of steam. Because I, di- I did not eat a very good dinner, so it was like, I don't necessarily have the energy to plow through this. But we still did pretty good. I think the I think the audio edited down to, like, just under an hour 20. So not that much shorter than some of our sessions anyway. And honestly, I'm sure some people out there who listen don't mind a shorter work. So I'm like, just like, hey, we focused on the stuff we focused on. And then I'm like, okay, cliffhanger. We'll go. We'll come back. Ta-da. Hey, and we mentioned this while we were recording, but like, I actually really do enjoy planning and logistics and, you know, you know, crunching the numbers. Oh, I am going to tell you, though, right now, I lost like an hour of sleep because I was thinking about percentile dice and how they fucking work. Yeah, we had a weird thing at the start because it was just trying to be like. <laughs> I lucky rolled double lot, and I'm like, okay, so that's 100. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, okay, so like I no, I, I go into this whole diatribe, which is like, okay, so technically you can read the percentile system either way with with triple zero, but I believe I've specifically wrote the tables, but it was like there was a long conversation about wrapping your head around how you're supposed to read the tens places on percentiles. Yeah, no, and I figured out, I figured out, like I finally figured out why I had a fucking mistake. I why I was how I mistaken it the way I did. Because the way that you read them is both your dice are you both your the both you read your both your tens and your ones from zero to nine. That way, um, so your double um, so your zero and double zero could either be one hundred or zero, depending on how you like you wanted to do that. So it could either be from zero to ninety nine or one to a hundred. The way I was reading them, and this was my mistake, this was actually me, this is actually my fault, is I was reading my 10s 0 to 9, but the 1s place 1 to 10. Which is normally how you read a D10. Yeah. So, like, I was like, so, like, I'm literally laying in bed, but like, God, like, because it was just one of those, you know, those errant thoughts that, like, you know, blindsigned you at 3 a.m., and it was just like, Oh, and I was, because I was basically, like, running, all right, so if I rolled this and this, it would turn out to like this, but why does this happen? I'm like, it's entirely on how you read the dice. So, like, for sake of convenience, yes, it's actually better to put both dice on the same sort of reading level of, you know, both die is zero to nine on both one, because otherwise you have to either remember, like, how you read it. It's actually more complicated. You just have to remember that the double, like, the zero and aught zero can either represent 0 or 100, depending on the game you're playing. In this game, it would mean 100. So, Mega, you are actually right. It's just in the moment, I couldn't wrap my fucking head around it. I had to, like, look at it later to understand it and go, oh. Yeah, and like that's, a, and that's one of the reasons why in the moment I didn't want to, like, push too hard to, like, no, you're wrong, because I'm like, well, okay, so, no, technically, I'm there's there's a way you can read this which is different. Yeah. So, like... I, I don't want to push too hard, but the it is noted in all my notes, all percentile tables and all are noted as, you know, 0, 1 to, 90, uh, to 100, which is double yeah. re- listed as double zero because it's easier to write that. Sometimes you just have to work things out in your own head. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know that. So I didn't want to mention that because that was actually that was kind of noteworthy to me as I'm laying in bed praying that the spider doesn't come out and bite me again. You really got to like, get rid bitten. of that spider. Yeah, I gotta get rid of the spider. Usually, usually I leave spiders alone. It's like you chill over there, you eat some. No, bugs, listen, there there are some spiders that that you just it's it's a thing you just you don't want to deal with. Like we have, 
I don't know what what which particular brand, but they're like the they're the big size of your palm type spiders, mm-hmm. the hunting type, and you're like, okay, nothing against you, but you can't live in my house, okay? That's just not cool. Like this is not a space for you to live. If you're a small spider hiding in a corner, love corner spiders. Oops. That was my that was spring set. Sorry, I was gesticulating. I pointed at the corner of my room. Um, corner spiders, they're great. They eat ants, flies, mosquitoes, whatever. Anything that's small and gets up in there and you're like, oh, nom nom nom. That's fine. Get rid of those. I, first of all, if you're if you're that big of a spider, I don't know what the fuck you're going to eat in this house. But also, just you need to leave. It's the same way with um, scorpions. Like It's like, listen, scorpion, I don't have anything against you personally, but y'all can't be living in my house house with your stingers and your pinchy claws. That's not cool. Like, we people walk around in here in the dark with bare feet. And just, we don't want to deal with you. Like, just get out. And, like, if you can, if you can rescue a small arachnid or other, other creature and, like, just be, like, out of my house, that's cool. At the same time, I'm not so overly concerned with their success rates because there's a lot, there's lots of fucking spiders and scorpions that, like, if, if it's not easy to do, I'm not just like, well, I'm sorry, but you have to go now. Like, the, this was the path your life chose when you decided to be in my room. <laughs> is um, like, as opposed to just wasps, which is just, um, I'm just like, you have to die. But that's that's on me. That's just my personal no, I'm, deep-seated I'm, phobias. I'm like, I'm sorry, are you a fucking wasp? Get the fuck out of my house. Get away from me. That, that's because wasps are just assholes. Like, bees... Right. Like, bees, bees and I, look- I'm a little bit phobic of bees, too. Like, it's all those types well, of singing are- insects, but... I accept that bees generally are, you know, get you know, go along to get along. You you don't yeah. bug the bees; the bees don't bug you. Wasps will just come after you. Yeah, wasps are, wasps are an aggressive species. I'm just like, no, get the fuck out of here. But get no, like me. usually, I guess I said I leave fucking spiders alone. But I'm, I don't know if it's like the same spider or whatever because I actually like my bite marks actually swell up a little bit. Like I don't um like like half I a do year concur ago, I, that that probably means that something is slightly venomous or you've yeah. got an allergy. One of the two. But um like like last time I got bit, which was like half a year ago, like my face got swollen up. I actually like I could not see out of one eye. Yeah, that like, was a weird time. I think we talked about not necessarily in a recording, but we talked about it around our recording schedule because I was like, "Are you all right though?" And <laughs> you're like, "No, I'm fine. I just can't see out of my eye." I'm like, mm. This sounds bad, but <laughs> I, f- me knowing Lucky, I feel like if it wasn't okay, you'd fucking say so. You'd be like, "Nah, dude, I'm dying," and I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> well, he's dead." So, yeah, and so like now I got bite marks again. One of the bite marks is on the opposite side of my arm, like near my elbow, so I can't look at it, and it makes me angry. It's like, excuse me, I want to examine the wound, and I got two on my fucking no, three on my neck now. So apparently it's something that was sleeping like that like like hangs out near the head of my bed because I am a guy who sleeps with my arms up in my pillows <laughs> and it bites me up in that ear. So I actually um another reason I lost sleep today is because I slept turned around with my feet at the head because I'm pretty sure if it decided to bite my legs I'd be less pissed off about that than my face again. And yeah, it's just during those times I'm like motherfucking percentile. How do you do? I'm I'm definitely like I like to think like I am a clever person, but I'm not necessarily a bright person. I need like some time to work through once in a while. I <laughs> think well, and we've talked about this how there's you know different kind of smarts. Like I'm fucking dumb when it comes to maths. I'm like like you're you're even better than that. Sometimes I'm like hold on, I I need my calculator because otherwise I'm gonna be here for an extra like five minutes until my brain puts the pieces in the right order. Yeah. So, like, some people are just wired differently, but that's definitely a thing that happens with different, like, expertise, I'd guess. Like, some stuff is just like, boom, I know this. Other stuff is like, wait, hold on. A equals B equals C? Question mark? Mm-hmm. And then you're like, yes, that's correct. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then, then then there are some stuff which is just like, you know, what does X equal? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, not literally, because I actually am I'm okay at basic algebra, but, like, there are some subjects which I just look at it and I go, huh? Okay. So, yeah, wor- working it out in your own uh, your own time is, like, a pretty key thing, which school is not good at. Show your work and all that stuff, and I'm like, that sucks. So, yeah, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to admit, I didn't sleep well, but, like, between, like, the percentile, like, me, like, turned around, 
And the fact that when you're afraid that you're about to get bit by a bug, your body does that thing where it starts, you start becoming hyper aware of every little movement on your body. From like, you know, the wind rustling like your hair or fucking, uh, you know, just something looking weird, like it just feels weird. It's like every time I felt like my, my skin like crawl just a little bit, I was like, ah, that was stressful. I'm actually surprised I was actually able to get up at a semi decent. Mm. But I'm here and we're pretty cool. Well, let's see. We're just under two hours. Ironically, I think with editing, this show might end up shorter than Let's Duck FGO did if we stopped, like, right, literally right now. Uh, I really don't want to faff for just the sake of faff. No, there's no point to faff just to faff, but I'm, I'm like, that, that's interesting, because we, if you haven't listened to it, but I expect most people who listen to this will, we talked a lot on Let's Duck FGO. It was a pretty good episode, I think, because we had a lot of news and speculation, talked about some new servants, and then there was a lot of, like, story stuff with Agartha. We, because we were done with it, we got real deep in there. Uh, but yeah, honestly, like, I'm thinking I'm, maybe, maybe I could be, you know, we've been, with, with pre-game faff and all that other stuff, it's been, you know, a couple hours since we got set up to start. I'm like, I'm kind of like, oh, I can't go for some dinner. I didn't eat, a, you know, I don't eat a big lunch, so it's like, I can be a little hungry. We can stop now. I can do other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's I gotta see. get out of my car again. While it's, while it's not raining. That's good. That's always important. Mm -hmm. Working while it's not raining. Um, so yeah, I guess, no, there's no, like, I, one thing I could mention that will be interesting is that, um, uh, for the next couple of weeks, my parents are going out of town, so I have the house to myself. I'm going to sit here and manage it and feed the cats and stuff, because they're going to be gone a while. Uh, so, for instance, that's why, um, Lucky, you remember I said there were sh some shenanigans yesterday? Mm -hmm. That was because, uh, you know, like, usually every couple of weeks we'll order pizza, so... That was my, my mother wanted to make sure I, like, okay, had all the right login and stuff and remembered all the the uh, addresses and stuff so that while I was on my own, I could, like, order pizza and some wings. And by myself, that'll feed me for, you know, two or three days. So, because unlike Lucky, I physically cannot eat an entire pizza in one go. I wish I could not eat an entire pizza in one go. I don't know. Maybe I could if I tried, but that's the thing is I wouldn't try. I've never really been big on, like, eating a whole shitload all at once, but, so, that was the shenanigans, it was like, okay, we're gonna, we've established that tonight's meal will be pizza, and we're gonna order it, so, well, if we order with your credit card, so we put your information in, that means you have to sign for it when it comes to, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna tell Lucky, he's just woken up, like, hey, give me, like, 20-30 minutes, and if you don't mind waiting a little bit longer, I'll just eat dinner when the pizza comes. So that was a, that was a funny anecdote from yesterday, uh, and we'll see if there's any more stuff that happens. Otherwise, yeah, yep. I guess, I don't know, let's see. I mean, I'm going to watch some more TV in the not-too-distant future. Like, literally, uh, before this got set up, I was, while I was eating lunch, I was checking out, like I said, Dope. That's a series on drugs on Netflix, a documentary about law enforcement and also users and dealers of drugs. But uh, I'm all about uh, criminal justice, so that super interests me. But, like, I'll watch some more stuff, and, you know, maybe I'll find some anime stuff to watch. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will actually get to get around to rewatching the first season of Kakaguri. Otherwise, I'll get back to the other video game stuff. Actually, Lucky, this is a good question that we might want to round up on. Um, has uh, PS Plus put out what's coming out on uh coming out next month? Oh yeah, um, they have. It's just that I was I completely like did not want, so I didn't think about it. So hang on, let me pull it up here real quick. Because as we like to talk about that with our friends and community, mm -hmm. so if those if I'm so, actually interested in those, go ahead. Um, so it's um Pro Evolution Soccer or 2019. That's the big game, so, um, the foot, foot soon. and there is another one that seems a bit more interesting, but at the same time, not that interesting, it's called Horizon Chase Turbo. It's basically, a, like, a, um, it's a homage to classic 16-bit racers. Eh. PlayStation, so, you know, this, this is a thing you should, you should maybe up your game on a little bit. Like, well, some, I mean, some like, months, the PS Plus is really good, and, like, the football one, like, that's probably okay, but if that's a big seller, okay, that's cool, we're not interested in that, but, like, yeah. And I don't mind the indies, but it's like, goddamn, there are times when you could you could bring some A games. Yeah, this is only this is only doing these two games, so I'm just like, uh, there's there's nothing either for there's nothing there for me. So I really didn't think about it. Yeah, and also the same way, I'm like, eh, I got more stuff. I can download stuff if I need to. Like, I gotta convince myself to beat Valkyria Chronicles Four still. See, look, he has this problem. I get to, like, I get to, like, an emotional moment, and if I don't get past that moment, like, immediately, it takes me forever to get over it. it I'm like really that, but does. instead of the emotional moments, it's mechanics. Yeah. I feel like there's every JRPGs, there's that one boss who kicks my ass, and I'm like, okay, 
Now I have to like stop what I'm doing. I have to stop the flow. I got to go back in time and grind. Actually, honestly, I had that problem with a couple places with VC4 too. We're just so, like, like I'm at this emotional roadblock. The gameplay roadblock frustration cock blocked me so hard. I'm like, I no longer feel a strong desire to play this game. Oh, and is anybody watching this series on our channel? No. <laughs> no offense to you if you didn't. Like, I can't force you to watch something, but that if I'm doing a project for the channel and nobody cares for the most part, that if I don't also enjoy it, that's a a key factor in whether or not we do things. Like, hey, guess what? I bet if people weren't interacting with Lucky on his streams, uh, or if Lucky picked a certain game and people didn't seem to care, Lucky would probably be less inclined if that game was kicking his ass or something. Yeah, no, honestly, I'd probably just quit playing and delete all the... Uh, yeah, trash the archives and then maybe some yeah. other day. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, if, if uh, we do something I, for the channel and we don't get feedback off it, that's kind of just like, well, why are, why are we bothering, right? Yeah. Unless it's so easy for us, like actual plays, unless it's so easy for us to to turn those out, then it's like, yeah, I don't know, is this worth the effort? The actual plays is just something we're going to do anyway, so it's like, let me just, because I said to myself so many times, God, I wish I'd recorded these. No, oh, yeah. Like, like, a lot of our Star Wars stuff, I wish I'd figured out recording for that. That would have been great to just record. We probably couldn't monetize any of it because I used to play clips of Star Wars music in the background, but it was thematic, and I don't really... Like I said, I don't really care about the hard point of monetization on everything. Like, we're not we're not full-blown sellouts. We just, we're just a little bit of a sellout. A little bit. Tiny bit of selling out. Because we, we need to eat and buy video games. <laughs> Possibly not in that order. <laughs> well, I mentioned this um, yesterday, but I'll mention it again. But um, thanks to our Patreons, um, I was able to buy um, Shovel Knight, which I'm streaming now. I'm almost done with it. Probably gonna, I probably got one more stream worth out of it, which I might do today. Might do another day. I have company over, and I gotta work on my car, as I said. If not, I'll definitely stream tomorrow. And I was able to buy um, Clip Studio, Clip Art Studio. Which is a better, um, I would definitely say a better art program than um, Paint Tool Sci. Now I just need to save up enough to get me a new tablet and I can start, um, I can start, um, putting out uh, more art. Cause that's something I've definitely, like, decided. If we're, if we're actually getting monetization, I think we need to start, start selling our brand a bit visually. Something that makes us, uh, distinctive. E. So. You no, know, branding uh, is something I like. It, and which and, and that's the yeah, other thing. So, it's like I'm fucking, I'm not good at that. Like when you see a thumbnail, like a Let's Talk FGO thumbnail, that's as good as it gets with me. Is I opened up Paint and I edited some stuff. Like, I, like again, I consider like do, taking over the thumbnails, but like he's been doing the thumbnails for like so long. It's like, well, yeah. Know. At this point, I think for Let's Talk FGO, that's that's just the thumbnail style. Yeah, I don't know. So it's just like I'm gonna leave it alone. That's why, like, I don't mind. But like, once I get this, like, once I get this new tablet, some things might get changed. I don't know. I gotta talk to Omega about it because, as I said, like, what what people first see, it's not always, it's not just the text. It's also the thumbnail and crazy stuff. But as I said, I'm not in a, like I I I think I told this one. It's like I don't like trying to make a change in the channel unless I am 110 percent sure that Omega will go for it. So, unless I'm be like, yes, I have a rock solid argument and perfect point that Omega's just be like, okay, cool, I get it. I don't bring it up. It's like, mm. I do a, I do a bunch of, um, compromise before I even start the argument. So, I'm weird like that. And just at this point, I'm like, nope, I don't have enough to convince Omega, so I'm not gonna bring it up. Soon, though. Soon. And hey, I res, I also respect the work. Mm hmm. But yeah, uh, so speaking of stuff we're doing on the channel, yeah. uh, so it, this is a good point to bring up. So this should be, unless I'm not mistaken, this is uh, what's up number uh, 48. I actually thought about it in celebration of like the monetization thing, maybe making this a public episode on short notice. But I actually decided against it because we're so close to 50, and that will definitely be a milestone which will warrant a public episode. So that's coming up real soon. That'll be in a probably a couple of weeks. Uh, I, and I, I kind of feel like I'm not caught up on celebrating like a year of what's up specifically. Because what's up is just the what's up, you know, like we just do it. That's part of yeah, the flow. But 50 episodes produced feels like a milestone to me. So we'll we'll do that. And that's 50 weeks. So we said, hey, let's fucking talk about this shit. Um, we also people asked about this with other stuff. So um, with Let's Talk FGO, we're farther away from that. Uh, but we're coming up on 100 episodes and also sometime in the next couple of months. That will be two years of doing the show, which I think is a pretty decent milestone as well. We'll talk about 
Um, either of those will probably be public because they won't be at the same time. And also, uh, whether it's a Let's Talk FGO or a WhatsApp or whatever, when if you know if we hit two uh, K subs, we'll do something public and you know group facing to celebrate. We're still a little yeah. ways off from that. We're just under nineteen hundred now. Uh, so yeah, you know, tell your friends, get in there. We can we can have some fun together as a community. I know people love the live episodes, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to do them all the time because then it's not like special, right? Yeah, it's a cool thing. Like, arguably, it's special for our patrons who, at the ten and up level, can jump in every week. Uh, I said I was a little bit of a sellout. Um, huh. but you know, they also directly pay for the privilege. So like, that's like, yeah, you're you're in here, you're doing a special thing all the time because you elected to do it. I don't know if we'd like drop live streams all the time if people would, would be as interested. And when we do do it, I know people love it because it's not an all the time thing, you know. Uh, so yeah, I guess we can wrap up there. We did um we did manage to make the raw recording over two hours. All right, well, good. And everybody got to talk lots. Uh, yeah, okay. So we'll uh we'll wrap up then, and we'll go about our business. Lucky's gotta go under a car, and I'll probably do some dinner or something, watch some TV. Go back to Farm and Lane. Sos, if you like this episode, give it a like. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. You can also check out our Discord. That link is in the description, and that is how we do live episodes, is people listen in our Discord. And, uh, yeah, check that out. If you're new here and you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel for many reasons, including getting new videos and also, you know, helping us towards those goals. And even if you're already sub, considering that bell for notification, because you never know when we'll post a new video. I've said that for several months now, so it's definitely the truth. Yeah. And like it says at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to our episodes in audio format, downloadable for just as little as a dollar a month. Um, usually right away after editing, so they're, we're pretty likely split on that part. And at other levels, you can get access to stuff early, you can listen to stuff live, special shoutouts, all that goodness. And it really helps us out. And we're not going to stop needing your help just because we can run some ads now. Like, it's it's still a big deal for us to be to be mostly fan-funded. And if we could we could go all the way just on fan-funding, that'd be great. But I also accept that, like, y'all have your own lives to lead, too. So, you know, not everybody can be just throwing out cash all the time. We appreciate those who can. Yeah, thumbs up. All right. So this has been What's Up. We'll see you next week for more What's Up, uh, more Let's Talk FGO. If you want to know more about what we're going to talk about in Let's Check FGO and how we're handling that schedule, check out the most recent episode that happened before this one. Uh, and we'll post other stuff when we post other stuff. Look forward Lucky to Lucky out. streaming. He's out. He's not going to say anything else. <laughs>